our Unimog has taken us to some of the most unique and beautiful places in Australia. Being a rugged self-contained vehicle, we can go places many can't. It has given us the freedom to pursue our passion for photography and creating art together. We have always loved to travel and explore. We like hot weather, each other's company and being away from crowds. So we love to go remote at times when others don't generally travel. Ian has been photographing me for over 20 years. Being able to access these beautiful places has allowed us to develop a unique style of photography. Join us for a tour around our Unimog U1250. One afternoon there was a knock on the front door. A scruffy looking character told me he had a crane to deliver. I told him he had the wrong address, but he produced a delivery docket with Ian's name on it. I was so confused. I left him at the door while I went to call Ian. His response? Oh, it's here already. He saw a truck up for auction placed a bid and was the highest bidder. He had not found the right time to tell me he'd bought a Unimog. Once parked on the driveway, I thought he was crazy. I must admit, it took me a while to share his vision. The U1250 is one of the smaller Unimogs. It is 2.1 meters wide and about five meters long. The truck had spent 30 years working on the railroads. The paint was in pretty poor condition, so we had it soda blasted back to bare metal. We extended the roof of the cab to give us more headroom and space for air conditioning. With help from a friend, we built a frame for the camper box out of steel. We then glued on sheets of 2mm aluminium with Sikaflex. The edges of the box are all reinforced with 3mm checker plate. As we wanted to be able to carry passengers, the frame is heavily reinforced front and rear. The floor of the camper is a specially made composite panel of plywood, aerogel foam for insulation and aluminium with a Jarrah overlay. The box is lined with a similar composite of plywood, aerogel foam and laminex. The cabinets are also made of the Laminex composite and are finished with a moulded Jarrah edging. The box is fully insulated with the walls being 90mm thick. The truck is powered by a Mercedes-Benz OM352A turbo diesel. Ian took the old engine out and completely rebuilt a new, more powerful engine. The first start was an exciting day, an enormous milestone. The engine is tuned for around 200 horsepower and has a water-air intercooler. It's fully balanced like a racing car engine and so smooth you can balance a 50 cent piece on top of it. The engine has enough power for us to cruise at 100 kilometers an hour easily. The big advantage the Unimog has is its portal axles. The portal axles and the big tyres give us about 500 millimetres of ground clearance under the axle. We run Michelin XZL36580 R20 tyres, which are very tough. Ian rebuilt the portal axles with new bearings and seals. He also fitted new brakes. We have two brake calipers on each wheel. We made a lot of modifications to the truck. They all required paperwork and an inspection by an engineer. Six years later, in 2015, we drove out of the shed for the first time. As you can see, Ian was pretty happy. He did quite a few laps around the parking lot. For the last six years, we have taken it around Australia on highways, extreme four-wheel drive tracks and beaches. We have been in some remote and very hot places and have performed extremely well.
As this was a short wheelbase truck, we were limited to the size of the box we could build. This meant that the interior of the camper took a lot of thought and planning. Every inch of available space had to be used. Ian has a great eye for detail and did an enormous amount of research before deciding on any additions. This is a really small space, so when we were doing our design, we were very conscious of not making it feel smaller. We did a lot of research and we went to a lot of caravan and camping shows and we sat in a lot of caravans and a lot of motorhomes and overall we always got this feeling of being really claustrophobic. We realized that what it was is that there was always overhead cupboards and this really closed the space in. So when we did our design we were very conscious as much as possible not to put any overheads in. So where we did put them in on either end we made sure that they were small and compact and didn't intrude into our living space. We have large windows all the way around and they're really great because they let in a lot of light. This light comes in, it reflects off the melamine and it adds to the sense of space. They also give us a lot of flexibility because what we can do is if on one side the sun is coming in, we can simply lift the blind which blocks the sun, stops the inside from heating up too much. The other thing that's good is if we have a really strong wind coming in on one side, then we simply close that window, open the other one, and we're still getting really good cross ventilation. In addition to our windows, we have two overhead hatches. So one above the sink, and then we have another one here above the stove. So the one above the stove is great because when we're cooking, it vents the steam and the odors straight out. The positioning of these hatches was really, really important because even though they are marine grade and they're fully waterproof, if you get a twig or a leaf or something in the mechanism, they do leak. This is our main food preparation area. It's where we keep our coffee machine and over on this side underneath this cover is our diesel stove. So we lift up the lid. So the lid acts as a splash guard for the side and the rear. And when it closes down, folds flat, it acts to protect the ceramic glass top when we are traveling. Underneath the sink, we have some drawers. So this is where we keep all our plates and glasses and our pots. Pot is a really great set. It's very compact just folds into itself. Really great for small spaces. On this side, we have another drawer, and this is where we keep all our cutlery and a few uh, extra pots that we found useful along the way. Underneath the cutlery drawer, we have our fridge on slide outs. It's a Bushman's fridge, it's around 70 litres and it has three tiers, so quite a lot of space. We have added extra insulation on the outside to make it more efficient. Next to the fridge, we have a freezer. So it's also a Bushman's and we have done the same thing, insulated it on the outside to make it more efficient. Plenty of room inside. Opposite side to our meal preparation area, we have our sink area. So it's just a standard caravan sink. It has your fold up tap it has hot and cold running water. And over on this side is our filter drinking water. Now we did have a ceramic glass lid, but we left some pots in here and closed the lid down. It wasn't quite closed and it got lent on in the corner and it shuttered. And underneath the sink, we have two 240 volt plugs and these are the gauges for our water tanks. We have a cupboard underneath here where we keep 
all our cleaning things. So we also have a little vacuum cleaner. It just pops nicely back in there. Underneath the cupboard, these are the vents for our heater. We have a fixed bed. And for us as well, we wanted to maintain that sense of space. We couldn't think of anything worse than lying in bed close to the roof and feeling really closed in and claustrophobic. As far as comfort goes, it was really important to us. So we went with a full latex mattress from IKEA and it's on a slatted base from IKEA. The great thing about this base is that it can elevate on either the foot or the head. So if for some reason we have to park on an angle, we can pull either end up to level the bed out. You can see how much room to move there is. We can both be on our knees without touching the roof. We just have to watch for the cupboard at the back. So around the bed, we also have some more cupboards. So they clip open like that. So in this one, I just keep my some of my bikinis. And over in these ones, we tend to keep our spare winter clothes. And on this side, we have another two of those cupboards. They're slightly bigger than the ones at the back. Now, from the top, they look really small, but they're really deep. All of this came out of just this one cupboard. Over on this side, we have another one, and that's where we keep all our spare linen and sheets. Above the bed, we have one of two of our overhead cupboards. So let's have a look. It's got the flip up lid with the spring again and we keep everything in boxes. It just keeps it nice and tidy and we're able to access what we want really easily. We don't have air conditioning in the back of the truck, but we do have fans. So it's a Sirocco 2 fan. It has three speeds. We generally just use it on the low speed. We have another one on the other side. We have a lot of lights in the truck. At the entrance, we have an orange strip light that is supposed to not attract insects. We have two LED reading lights at both ends of the bed and two above the seats. In the ceiling, we have big round LEDs with two settings. We tend to run them on the dimmer setting most of the time. One of the things that we've done for just a little bit of fun on our years of travel is to collect a couple of soft toys. So this over here is Craig, the crocodile. He comes from Lake Argyle. Over here is Ernie the emu, and he comes from the Andara lava tubes. This is Colin the camel. He comes from Bulia. This is Warren the Wombat, and he comes from the Mornington Peninsula. And this is Penny the Fairy Penguin, and she comes from Warrnambool. Under the bed, we have two storage drawers. In the bottom one, we keep our shoes. So we have them in boxes. It just keeps them nice and compact and easy to access. Above that, is where we keep our clothes. So this is my side, this is Ian's side. What I have found is that by rolling the clothes, you can get a surprising amount in. The other thing we couldn't have in this space is a fully enclosed toilet and shower. We are fully self-contained though, and I'm actually standing in the shower. So if we have a look over here, here's our shower head, pulls out, simply feed it back in, clip it away. We've got hot and cold running water, 
I'm standing here on a grate and the water drains directly into the grey water tank. Now getting splashes and water on the floor is not a problem. The entire interior of the cabin is fully waterproof and sealed, so any spills and mops are really easily cleaned up. We have these storage nets on the side for easy access to things we use often. Under here, we have a nature's head composting toilet. It's on slides, so it comes out into the center when you want to use it. When you're done, simply slide it back, close the door, nice and compact. So this is the cupboard that we use for our every, 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 every. This is our main cupboard that we use for everyday, day-to-day -day use. So, the bulb but that we use for our everyday living. So, up top, we have the area where we keep our towels. As you can see, the lid flips up and it's got this really clever spring that just holds it in position. Let's clip it back down. Underneath that is where we keep our food, just our everyday food. So they've been designed around these boxes. So the reason that we use these boxes is because if anything breaks or spills, it's well contained inside and less of a cleanup. It also helps to reduce some of the rattles. We've lined the bottom and the front of the door with marine carpet. This helps with some of the rattles as well. Underneath is just where we store our toiletries and things. And then underneath here is a shelf where we charge all our GoPros and cameras and phones. We have another large drawer. So over here is where we keep things like our coffee machine when we're traveling and over in these two compartments is where we keep the bulk of our food. Now what you can't see is there's actually another compartment behind it. So what we do is we take the leg of the table out and the drawer extends all the way out to the toilet and in those compartments we keep things that we don't use every day like flippers and our eco pot, things like that. This is our seating area. It has a dual purpose. We are licensed to carry passengers, so these are normal car seats out of a Jaguar S-Type. If I put my hand down here, you can see out comes a lap belt, goes across, clips in there, so it's all compliant. It then folds up really nicely when we're not using it and does pops down in there. So this is our table. It's on a swivel mount and when we're not using it, it just sits comfortably inside the cab. When we want to use it, it simply just comes in, swivels around and there it's ready to use. So we use this if we're eating inside or if we're doing any video editing or photo editing. This is how the table sits most of the time, um, even when we're driving, if we're going on a smooth road. If we are going on corrugations or a bit of a bumpy road, we simply unclip it and then it stores behind us, behind the seats. So on the floor, you'll see that there's two panels cut out. So underneath this one is our lithium batteries and underneath the other one is where we keep some of our spare truck parts. This is our control panel. On the left there are two circuit breaker panels. Every appliance has its own separate circuit. The battery monitor monitors the charge coming into and out of the batteries. Then we have two solar controllers for the solar panels and then a radio. There are also two temperature monitors for both inside and outside temperatures. We have been using a pod coffee system but it stopped working on our last trip. So we are looking for something a little bit better, perhaps more sustainable and of course must be compact. When we're driving, all our camera gear and laptops get stored on the bed and it's secured with a cargo net. 
This has been really invaluable. Often when we're driving on rough roads, things tend to get thrown around a bit and this keeps them securely in place. One time we were driving on the beach and we actually became airborne. Everything stayed in place except for a coconut that we'd left on the bed that flew forward and landed in the cab. As you can see, we've done numerous off-road trips and the net has worked fantastically. The exterior of the truck also took a lot of planning. All the additions had to be practical, functional, as well as add to the overall look of the truck. On the roof, we carry our spare wheel. We have a crane to lift it up and down. Permanently mounted on the roof are four solar panels. We also have a large portable solar panel, so if we park in the shade, we can still continue to charge the batteries. We also have a large storage space on the roof, where on longer trips, we carry things like the inflatable canoe and storage boxes with extra clothes, food, and our two-man tent and sleeping bags for overnight hikes. The truck is quite tall. It takes a bit of getting used to climbing in and out of the truck. In order to comply with Australian design rules, because we carry passengers, we had to have an automatic step for the rear. Ian designed and built this very clever contraption. The steps fold up and down at the touch of a button, which is just inside the entrance of the cabin. We have handles both sides to climb in and out. It took a bit of getting used to, but now it's just second nature to us. On either side under the truck, we have the two storage compartments, and then our gas bottles sit on either side over there. And this is the mount for our bicycle rack. The number plate drops down to give us access to storage for our tent poles. We can carry up to eight three-meter tent poles. These storage compartments at the back hold some of our batteries. On the right hand is the storage for all our recovery gear, jack and jack stands. After an incident where our truck fell off the jack damaging the portal axle, Ian made this jack stand and base plate. We carry a large strap, tree protector, shackles, an axe and emergency triangles. This is where Ian stores all his tools. We'll show you all the things he carries later. This is another compartment where Ian stores his tools. It can also carry jerry cans if necessary. Front here we have a seven and a half ton winch and underneath here we have recovery and tie down points. We have a seven and a half ton winch at the back as well. Both winches are controlled from inside the cab. We have only used them once to pull a large tree that had fallen across the track. We run LED headlights, we have LED spotlights and then we have another four LED spotlights on the roof. Ian made a custom dash to fit all his switches and gauges, including an exhaust gas temperature gauge. We have a portal axle temperature monitor, which have sensors on the portal housing. In addition to the dash, he made an overhead console with more switches, a CB radio and another radio. We have four cameras on the truck, which can be viewed in the two overhead screens. Ian can select each view. The left and the right lets us see when we are going to hit trees and branches. We have a low mounted rear camera and a high mounted rear camera. This is the view of the screen while driving, so we can see what is going on around our truck. Our truck cab is unique. It is fully sound insulated we can drive at the speed limit and easily hold a conversation at 100 kilometers an hour. The space works very well for us. It's roomy, comfortable, and everything is within easy reach. Yeah. 
the interior of our cab is really comfortable with the extended roof I have plenty of room above my head I also have plenty of room for my knees we replaced the Unimog seats with BMW seats that I recovered in genuine Alcantara fabric another thing that's unique to our truck is we have electric windows With extending the roof, we had room to put air conditioning in, so we each have our own separate air conditioning system. The air conditioning works very well. We have been down the Birdsville track when it was in the high 40s, but the inside of the truck stayed really cool. We have plenty storage in the cab of the truck. Ian made the center console that's between the seats. The truck rides really smoothly. It's a bit like our Land Rover, although it is a little bit noisier. The crawl through really adds to the sense of space. The rear seat passengers can see out the front and we can have a conversation with them. The joint between the cab is quite special. Ian did a lot of research, but he couldn't find anything that would give us the roughly 500 millimeters of flex needed between the cab and the camper. So we made our own. We used one millimeter truck side sail material and I sewed it into the correct shape. The bellows have worked really well. We've had no leaks and we've seen just how much the truck can actually flex. To keep the noise and heat out, I made a big pad that goes around the interior bellows. It has worked fantastically well. We have two fuel tanks, 190 litres on the left and 160 litres on the right. We can carry up to 450 litres of fuel in the tanks and jerry cans, giving us a range of about 1,500 kilometres off-road and around 2,000 kilometres on-road. The tanks are higher than the chassis, so we maintain approximately 700 millimetres of ground clearance. Each tank has a pre-filter and a water separator, essential when getting fuel from more remote places. We also run fuel pumps that allow us to prime the system and transfer fuel between the tanks. We have a filter and a pump on each tank. While we can comfortably live inside the truck, we found that there are times we want to spend more time outside, especially if the weather is good. We've tried a number of things like tarps and shade cloth combinations, They've always served their purpose, but the lack of sides and privacy was always missing. We decided to make our own awning and designed it especially for our truck and our needs. It covers the full length of the camper and the cab and gives us a living area of around three and a half by six meters. So now we're going to show you our outdoor setup and how we put it together. So we've got a few special little things here. So this is a stainless steel table that attaches to the side of the truck. It is a bit scruffy, but we'll get the So it's got these little clips on the side here. Clips in. Leg comes down. This is where we store our outdoor tables. So we prefer having two small tables as opposed to one bigger one because that way we've got more options with what we want to do with them. These tables are great as they are height adjustable. We have had these chairs for over 10 years. I found them online from a company in India that makes old style campaign furniture. So we have an elongated house. Had specially made up for us. Has a gas fuse on it as well. Um, so if, if the hose was to break or with lift pressure, the gas fuse goes off and blocks the hose and stops it from leaking out. And you can see under there, 
is our two gas bottles. So because they're outside the truck, what we realized was that they were going to have the potential to get very dusty and very dirty. So I made these little canvas covers and they've worked fantastically well. We really love this awning. We feel like it's completed the truck. It has improved our outdoor living space. It protects us from the sun and has proven to be fairly weatherproof. It has attachable sides and front. Each panel has large mesh screen windows and roll up blinds and doors. We thought about having the awning made but couldn't justify the cost when we knew we could do it ourselves. Working with such large pieces of material was quite a challenge. We started with the domestic machine, but it really struggled. So we bought a proper walking foot canvas machine and that made it so much easier. All in all, it cost us much less than the quotes for a simple awning. Packing it away takes us around 15 minutes. These sand mats are fantastic. They really help to keep most of the dirt out of the truck. The heart of our electrical system is our Lutronics 240 volt inverter. To protect us, we have an RCD safety switch. We have a Victron 240 volt battery charger for when we are plugged into power. We have four 120 amp hour lithium batteries. We have remote switches to be able to switch them off and have a lithium truck starter battery as well. There are two alternators, a 250 amp and a 90 amp. We are happy that we changed to lithium. It works very well and saves us a lot of weight. This is the water and electrical compartment. This is the fill point for our water tanks. We have valves inside to fill each tank independently. The tanks are in the boot. Each one is approximately 120 liters and they were built to fit the space. The gauges are under the sink and show the water available in each tank. We have a 25 liter hot water tank, which is heated by the engine while we are driving or by the diesel heater because the water in the tank can get to 80 or 90 degrees, we have this thermostatic valve, which mixes in cold water so we don't get scalded. There is a heating element in the boot to stop the tanks freezing up in cold weather. And we also have a heater to keep the truck warm. We run two water pumps, one of each tank, but we have valves to connect both tanks to each pump in case one of them fails. We have an accumulator in the water system so the pumps don't run all the time. We used the John West fittings with the inserts and safety clips, and we've not had a leak in six years. We filter our drinking water through a Seagull 4 water filter, which is certified to remove bacteria and viruses. So far, we haven't had a problem. We have a single drinking water tap with a simple on and off. We also have an outside shower in the boot that runs both hot and cold water. We have a standard caravan sink. The water goes down and into a low profile pea trap and then into a 50 litre grey water tank. We are really careful what we put down the drain. All food scraps are cleaned off and we only use environmentally friendly natural soaps. We have an inspection port on top of the grey water tank and a valve to empty the tank. The final thing we have to show you is the truck's air system. We have an engine block compressor which runs the air brakes, the transmission shift and the diff locks. We also run two ARB twin motor compressors as well. The compressors run into a wet tank and then into a dryer to keep the air system clean. We have two attachment points to the system that allow us to pump up our tires. This takes around 15 minutes to go from sand driving to road pressure. We have 
we've come such a long way in the last 12 years. From that first knock on the door, the first drive out the workshop, to the 60,000 kilometers we have traveled. We have had highs and lows on the journey, but Ian's persistence over the six years it took to build the truck has paid off. We are so happy to be able to share our photography and adventures with you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. We'll always try and answer everyone.